Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, and we're gonna talk about Amazon's Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power. Uh, yeah, so they spend a lot of money on this show, and if they don't get that money back, they could be in big trouble. Uh, according to insiders, we're gonna talk about this because there is a lot of talk that uh, Amazon is actually a little bit nervous about how the show is gonna be received. Uh, based on the amount of money they've spent, we've seen a lot of headlines lately that House of the Dragon is kind of eating its lunch. Right now, there is more interest in House of the Dragon there than there is in Lord of the Rings. And um, they can't let this fail. We're gonna talk about how they cannot let this show fail. And even if it's a dud, even if it doesn't recoup costs, they will put a spin on it that this show is the most amazing thing ever, that people loved it, audiences loved it, everybody loves it. And again, you're gonna have to rely on Amazon's internal data um, to tell the truth and they're not gonna release that. I don't think they're gonna release it. They'll just be like, it was the most streamed show this week. So we're gonna talk about all this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants. Guys, over 274,000 subs, please hit the subscribe button. I think YouTube is up to some shenanigans this month. Um, and if you wanna support us further, if you like fantasy, if you like action and adventure, and uh, you wanna support a project that's not corporate owned IP, check out Crimson Wren Volume One from Clownfish Studios, that would be us, uh, written by Geeky and myself and drawn by the amazingly talented Jose Garcia. Uh, steampunk, fantasy, action, adventure, uh, a very uh, a traditional kind of uh, treasure hunt story with some beautiful, beautiful art. Check it out, coming your way. Uh, we've already doubled what we were looking for to get this book printed, and we still have 27 days left on the clock, guys. So I'm gonna put a link in the comments. Check out Crimson Wren Volume One. Yeah, we've been talking about House of the Dragon versus Rings of uh, Power, and I actually haven't watched House of the Dragon yet. I need to. Uh, people said it was actually pretty okay and uh, I might check it out. It broke all kinds of records, but Amazon is not real happy with that. In fact, one of the producers of Amazon's like, like uh, I don't think there's, there's any uh, competition. We don't feel any of it. It's totally manufactured by the media for headlines. I'm quite certain that the cast and crew doesn't feel any of it either. They know how, how hard it is to make these things. Um, so yeah, let's talk about this. Uh, it's the most expensive show ever produced, right? It's like, what, 50, $58 million an episode? And it doesn't look like a $58 million an episode show from what I've seen of it. I mean, people, the review embargo is up. People are talking about it. They said it actually is a very expensive looking show. But from what I've seen in the trailer, I'm like, eh, eh. And that's totally aside from the fact that they just made this whole thing up you know, whole cloth. This is, has nothing to do with Tolkien. It doesn't even have anything to do with the Peter Jackson movies. Um, it's just uh, a, a Middle Earth flavored fantasy show, expensive fantasy show for for uh, Amazon. And uh, the Wall Street Journal talked about how Amazon turned Lord of the Rings into the most expensive show of all time. Fifty eight million dollars an episode is like more than one season of The Orville. I think I think I saw The Orville was like sixty nine million for a season. So one episode of this costs more than the Orville. I'm sure. I'm sure it looks better than the Orville. I mean, the Orville is kind of, kind of uh, low budget, but that's part of the charm, right? Um, so they're talking about how much money they have spent on this. Uh, almost a billion dollars. I think it was like a billion dollars. Um, they said it's a fifth of what New Zealand allocated for its defense budget this year. Oh my God! And they filmed it in New Zealand. Now here's the thing. Um, it's not going to be allowed to fail. And we're going to talk about some of these reports. Bounding in the comics put it all together. Business Insider had an article saying that even if it uh, is a dud, they're not going to tell you it's a dud. And they're going to make sure this thing sticks. Now, the worst that would probably happen is they just won't renew it beyond what they've committed to already. But uh, coming from Bounding in the Comics, a new report claims Amazon and Prime Video will declare their upcoming series, The Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power, a victory regardless of actual viewership. Business Insider claims to have spoken to a number of anonymous insiders at Amazon Studios explaining what success for the series, which is estimated to cost upwards of a billion, looks like. In the report, 
uh, the writers assert word from those who have seen episodes is positive, and several industry insiders predict to Insider Amazon will find a way, regardless of actual viewership, to sound the trumpets of victory. This is a very corporate thing. This is what we're going to talk about. This I have another video scheduled for today that we recorded yesterday, uh, talking about Netflix and Disney hiding their true numbers for their streaming services to, and they're not going to be able to do that with um, going to a, an advertising based model. They're not going to be able to hide those numbers anymore. Amazon can just tell you, hey, we had the best week ever on Amazon Prime, but we don't know what we're comparing that to. And are they, they going to recoup their billion dollars? I don't know. I mean, people are probably going to sign up just to watch this show. I have no doubt they are. But right now, uh, they keep talking about you know manufactured outrage or whatever. All indication that I've seen is that House of the Dragon is eating Lord of the Rings lunch. That people are more excited about that. And that is with Game of Thrones dropping the ball in the last season. They're more excited about that than they are Lord of the Rings fan fiction. You know, so one anonymous insider described as a former senior Amazon Studios exec also told them the reason why it's going to succeed is because the executives at Amazon need it to succeed. If it doesn't succeed, there's going to be a big question um, from Amazon's chief executive officer and the board. This alleged executive added, if we can't take this piece of IP and make it successful, why is Amazon Studios even here? It has to succeed. There is no option. Another insider indicated the show has to outperform other Amazon Studios and Prime video offerings, telling the outlet, if it's not the highest performing thing Amazon has ever done, it's a failure. This insider added the caveat, but the outside world may never know. That's true. They're not going to tell you that they pissed away a billion dollars. They're not going to tell you that's a failure. I mean, look at, look at the damage control Disney does for Star Wars, for Marvel. You know, when they have a dud, they always put the most positive spin on it because they don't want the public at large feeling like, you know, oh, OK, the MCU's on the decline. Star Wars is on the decline. And usually what happens is you get third parties reporting it and they try to shut those third parties up, whether it's YouTubers or blogs or whatever. And then eventually it comes out like look at what happened with with Disney Star Wars. It was Hasbro. Hasbro telling their investors in 2018 that Star Wars merchandise no longer sold. It was a staple of Hasbro for decades. And uh, The Last Jedi basically killed any interest in Star Wars toys until The Mandalorian came along. And even now, there's not nearly as much Star Wars merch out there as there was before The Last Jedi. So it usually takes uh, word getting out that it was a dud you know, the long way around, because the official, I mean, no company is going to come out and say, yes, we failed. We failed horrendously. We pissed away a billion dollars that we could have spent on so many other things. You know, I, where's Twitter's outrage? That's why I want to know. Twitter is very selective. Where's Twitter's outrage? A billion dollars could feed a lot of homeless people. You could feed a lot of homeless people with a billion dollars. You could uh, give to social justice causes for a billion dollars, but instead, we're going to spend a billion dollars on an Amazon fan fiction, <laughs> yeah, fanfic Tolkien. And it's not even fan fiction because anybody that knows anything about Tolkien, they, uh, they're they making this stuff up whole cloth. And they actually fired, didn't they fire the, the Tolkien expert? They brought a Tolkien expert in. He took a look at it. He's like, hell no. And they got rid of him. Uh, they didn't even involve uh, Peter Jackson because they, I guess they couldn't or didn't want to embarrass themselves. I don't know. I don't know. The same insider noted people's jobs could be on the line if the series does not perform well, according to Business Insider. I think Amazon Studios chief uh, Jennifer Salk's position there is very, very secure, but all the senior leaders are probably not sleeping well right now. It's a high stakes moment for them. Again, go back to this. We have a producer. We don't think there's any competition between House of the Dragon and Lord of the Rings. It's fine. Everything's fine. Look, we did a video the other day. Um, and again, it's, you know, anecdotal, but, uh, I think it was Parrot Analytics said that the interest in House of the Dragon was something like 20 times what the interest was in Amazon's Lord of the Rings. The Hobbit kind of damaged you know, the cinematic version. It was kind of like the uh, Star Wars prequels where it wasn't the worst thing ever produced, but it definitely, uh, definitely 
hurt the franchise overall. And this is not, I don't think, going to win people back, especially not the Tolkien purists. So what they're doing is they're already preemptively defending it, making excuses for it. If you don't watch, if you don't watch this show, you hate black people. If you don't watch this show, you're a bigot. You're closed-minded. You know, never mind that none of this is Tolkien. None of this is Tolkien. But we're going to see a lot of that, right? Uh, you know, um, they sold the rights to the film rights, TV rights, merchandising rights, to Middle Earth, to the Embracer Group. And they're already talking about, you know, spinoff with Gandalf and a spinoff with Galadriel and a spinoff, you know, all these games and, and ancillary, you know, books, merchandise, whatever, the the Middle Earth cinematic universe or whatever the hell they're thinking. So, I mean, Tolkien, absolutely, both of them, J.R.R. and Christopher, are spinning in their graves at this point, I'm sure. But again, it's just become an IP. Uh, Amazon, Apple are not independently financially accountable. Disney Plus is a lost leader. Peacock is a lost leader. Paramount Plus is a lost leader. That's happening without everyone making a bunch of Lord of the Rings, and they're already feeling the strain. Um, they said, we've already been living in this distorted entertainment environment where everybody's a winner and nobody makes money. I don't think anybody can sustain a heartbeat where Lord of the Rings or House of the Dragon are the new normal. There's no business in that. That's it. Like, I mean, the only way to get eyeballs is to spend hundreds of millions or billions of dollars. I mean, Disney's already cheaping out on their Marvel and Star Wars content. It's very obvious if you look at the trailers, you look at what's been produced. Uh, the claim that Amazon Studios will declare victory, whether or not actually it is actually a victory, isn't too hard to believe. Warner Media appeared to do the same with the premiere of House of the Dragon. Um, I've actually heard that House of the Dragon was, was a pretty big deal, but who knows. The studio claimed the debut episode was watched by a little less than 10 million people and touted as the largest audience for any new original series in the history of HBO. However, TV series finale reports the show only raked in a little over 2 million on cable. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. The outlet previously reported the series finale of Game of Thrones brought in 13 million viewers and the entire final season averaged 11.9 million viewers. On top of this massive discrepancy between viewing numbers reported by TV series finale, USA Today previously re reported that the Game of Thrones finale was watched by over 19.3 million viewers. Uh, after factoring in HBO Go and HBO Now, supposed victory for House of the Dragon looks even more dismal when you factor in Entertainment Weekly's report, claiming HBO informed them the season is averaging more than 44.2 million viewers once, wait, Claim that HBO informed them that the season is averaging more than 44.2 million viewers once all forms of viewing are counted. Um, yeah, so this is the thing. And this is, and they're going to have to be more transparent. Again, we have a video coming up later today talking about how advertising is going to force these streamers to become transparent. They're not going to be able to lie anymore because they have to be truthful with the advertisers. We can see the critics are already going into damage control. I love this one. Um, and I don't know who, who some of these people are, but you know, and I'm not, I'm not dunking on them personally, but got to see the first two episodes of Lord of the Rings and it's absolutely gorgeous. That being said, I've never seen a single Lord of the Rings movie, so I am completely lost, which is kind of upsetting considering it's a prequel. No, actually it's not. It is not a prequel to the Jackson films. It is, it is a fan fiction that is made to look similar to the Jackson films, but is not connected to the Jackson films. And it's also, uh, it also has nothing to do with Tolkien. None of this has anything to do with Tolkien. It's, it's a fanfic. I'm still excited to keep watching. I don't know what Lord of the Rings is, but it's pretty. I've seen the first two episodes. I've been skeptical. I was pleasantly surprised. It's actually good. Very good visuals are done just right. Visuals are done right. A great addition to the Tolkien world. Tolkien doesn't need any additions, but anyway. Stunningly gorgeous to look at. The score is beautiful. Takes a while to get going, and there's a lot going on, but for the fans of the movies, it'll take you right back at points once it's rolling. Again, why are they trying to market this like it's a prequel to the Jackson films? It is not a prequel to the Jackson films. It looks like it's trying to be the Jackson films. They're, I guess they filmed it in New Zealand and all that, but it is definitely not a prequel to the Jackson films. Uh, I've seen two episodes of Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. It's worthy of its namesake. Grand in scope and storytelling with intricately detailed locales and a good amount of action. I can't wait to see what happens next. What about the acting? What about the characters? It's pretty. That's what I'm getting out of this. 
The pilot for Rings of Power is great, but the second episode is going to make Lord of the Rings fans flip, that, flip, flip the F out. Flip the F out. It's so good. Very encouraged with the first two episodes. Each pocket of civilization they visit puts forth a new perspective and mythical cultural wonders. Straightforward plot mixed with starry eyes. Uh, they're going to do damage control because they want more access from, from Amazon. I, I know how the game's played. I played the game for years. We played the game with Disney. Like, we knew we weren't allowed to say certain things if we wanted to be invited back to the next uh, media event. That's just how it works. Um, what are you going to do about it, right? What are you going to do? Anyway, we're going to wrap this up. It's not going to be allowed to fail uh, for sure. Check out our other video talking about advertising rates and all of that and how this might pull back the curtain a little bit on the actual viewership numbers for a lot of these, uh, a lot of these platforms. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later.